FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome, and you are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Carrie Lutz. Today is 7 19 19. Don't know what that means numerologically. You tell me. If you got a question or you can tell me why this date is significant in numerological terms, I'd love to hear from you. Email address is kl at kerrylutz.com. Right now I'm at Freedom Fest. I'm hoping to do a lot of interviews today and get them out to you as soon as I can. It's a uh, It's really a nice conference, as always. You know, you go to enough of these conferences, they all kind of start blending in over time. And, uh, you know, it's the same topics. uh, Why the government's too big, why individuals are the only cure for what ails us, and why you have to be empowered. And I learned this lesson, really learned it quite well yesterday. Uh, I had what I would call a digital near-death experience. So my biggest asset for this show, for this company, for our clients, is my URL, financialsurvivalnetwork.com. And it's hosted by a large company. I'm not going to mention their name, but uh, I get an email yesterday saying that financialsurvivalnetwork.com has just been sold for $1,000. And I, like, freak out. Uh, I call the company up, I get their customer service. Sorry, it's been sold, there's nothing we can do about it. What's going on here? I didn't authorize it. I don't know how this happened. Look, it's one of three possibilities. I was hacked, my account got hacked, my computer got hacked, or I screwed up, which I seriously, seriously doubt. I would never, ever think of selling this thing. And it's my life's work over the last eight years almost nine years that I've had that URL posting content and doing stuff here. And, you know, I look at the thing, I didn't, could not figure it out, how it happened. Customer service could do nothing. I talked to the supervisor. She will not transfer me to anybody. She doesn't want to know about it. It's like, hey, this is our policy. Send an email to the auction department. And I said, well, maybe they'll answer me in three days. By then, I'm going to be out of business. You have effectively put me out of business. And I just, I was despondent. I mean, I was freaking out. I was cursing. I was screaming. So I hang up with them after talking to her for an hour and a half and she will not transfer me. And she just is like a freaking robot telling me the same thing over and over and over again. I mean, I'm telling you, I was beside myself. And then I start thinking, well, you know, all right, what is life going to be like without Financial Survival Network? I've got some other URLs which are better, but you don't know about them. And I'm like, I just don't know what to do. Um, So I talked to Stefan, my webmaster. His brother is a big domain name guy. They find the guy who bought it. And it just so happens he's in Las Vegas. So I call the guy up, talk to his brother, and he said, he'll get back to you in about five minutes. He's in a meeting. And I said, oh no, this is extortion. Well, what's interesting, they took possession of the domain name, but they didn't change the name servers. So the site was still working uninterrupted. So I figured, you know, I got to be really nice to these people. I got to calm down, take a deep breath, do a little meditation, give it over to God or the higher power, whatever you want to call them. I said, this is out of my control. There is nothing I can do other than to talk and be an effective communicator. And, you know, I'm really nervous about it. But I said, hey, I've got options. What are my options? It's real simple. Switch to another URL and build the audience back up more or less from scratch. I mean, a lot of you download the show from iTunes or other podcast uh, purveyors, aggregators. So I still have an audience, although it would be greatly diminished. We got tens of thousands of people coming to the site 
every every month. If you haven't done it, financialsurvivalnetwork.com. It's great stuff on there. We aggregate hundreds of news articles a week, important ones that the media doesn't cover, whatever. I'm not doing this to promote the site, just to tell you what happened and how it all worked out. So, you know, I'm waiting for the guy to call me back. And I said, you know, this isn't right. I can't get through customer service. So I, I subscribed to uh, uh, Spokio and one of the other ones. And I find on LinkedIn the general counsel of the company. And this is a multi-billion dollar company, one of the biggest uh, internet companies in the world. So I find it. I call, it's actually her, the general counsel. I leave a message, a nice message, because I said, if I scream at these people, I'm not gonna get what I want. It's one thing to scream at a customer service person. You can't scream at senior management in the company. So I send the person a text and nothing comes back. I tried a couple more times. So then I go to an online spoofing um, site and that's where it enables you to make a call, but to look, make it look like it's coming from someplace else. And I use the main number of the company <laughs> and she answers and I start talking to her and then boom, hang up. Well, all right, I'm waiting for the guy who bought my name. I'm figuring, hey, if I gotta pay the guy $10,000, I'm not gonna go any more than that. And then all of a sudden I meditated a little bit more and this feeling of peace came over me. I said, hey, I'm a problem solver. Yes, this is as bad as it can get. This is what I call a digital near-death experience. I know how Alex Jones felt now. I know how all those YouTubers felt where they just de-platform you. I, there was nothing malicious here, but maybe somebody hacked. I don't know how it happened. I still don't. Uh, I really don't believe that I could do anything this stupid, but I've done a lot of stupid things in my life. I'm virtually positive I didn't cause it to happen. And peace comes over me. And then it just dawns on me, hey, I was a lawyer. I figured out this stuff. I could go to court, get an injunction, sue these people, sue them in New York, where I still have connections, or in Florida in federal court, get an injunction, make them keep the thing on until we resolve it, knowing full well that uh, this guy, whoever bought it here in Las Vegas, is not going to want to hire a New York or a Florida attorney. And then it dawns on me, my first big case in my life, someone was suing me for $10 million because he owed me $12,000. And we were in court in Greenville, South Carolina. This guy was totally wired down there. He had the creepiest Southern slick charm lawyer ever. We move for summary judgment, can't get rid of it. Me and my attorney are being sued. I won't get into the details, but basically for slander and defamation. And we're facing a trial in uh, South Carolina for this. And I'm saying, this isn't gonna go well. And then I was, this is my fourth year in law school, or my third year rather, I only went for three years. Third year in law school, took a bankruptcy course. Best course I ever took. And it occurred to me then, hey, this guy is a deadbeat. We've got it on the record that he committed bankruptcy fraud. A judge in the case that we had done work for him on, the judge found that this person had committed bankruptcy fraud. And uh, so our contention was he's not defamable. You know, we can't defame this person because, uh, hey, judge said that he committed fraud. The judge in South Carolina said, no, sorry, no. So I get together a couple of other big creditors. We file our bankruptcy action in New York. It immediately stays his slander action in South Carolina and makes it a part of the bankrupt estate. And a couple of days later, we get a call from an anonymous third party saying, you've got this judgment against uh, Milton Blank and we'd like to buy it from you for 10,000. And I said, well, if you can uh, figure out how to get me a release on the slander action, a dismissal with prejudice, you got a deal. And sure enough, within three days, boom, that case was gone. Had my 10,000 bucks minus my lawyer's uh, 35%, but he more than earned it in this instance. We were both on the line here. We were both gonna lose that case too, because this guy had real juice in these courts. And the case disappeared, so it occurred to me, all right, 
I don't want to go bankrupt. This is a company. I've never had any company, never personally ever gone bankrupt, never had a judgment against me personally. Yeah, I got sued once for tens of millions of dollars, and that case settled. That was in my past life as an attorney. A whole nother story. One day I'll have a podcast called Legal Theft, and I'll tell you all about it. We settled that case, me, my partners, and our backer, for around $70 million. But in any event, I said, hey, I'll just take the company bankrupt, and I will void the transfer, because any transfer made in the course of a certain period of time, usually 90 days, is considered a preference in bankruptcy, and I'll just take it back. And, uh, you know, I don't owe any money, but, you know, there's, I owe money to myself from the company for, for many, many years, and I have a couple of other minor creditors, enough so it wouldn't be considered a fraudulent bankruptcy on its face. And then I was totally at peace. In the meantime, guy from uh, the CEO's office of this company calls me, and he's the nicest person in the world. Great person. I tell him what happened. He said, I'll try to help you. I don't know if I can. So he goes, and I mean, this is like totally cool. He looks, he says, you know, it looks like you may have been hacked, but I can't prove it. What you're saying makes sense. I, I don't know if there's anything I can do for you, but let me see. I said, all right, hey, bankruptcy court, here we come on Monday. I'll do the filing in Florida. And uh, this guy in Vegas, probably not going to hire a bankruptcy attorney for something he paid a thousand for. I'll give him $2,500, we'll be done. Well, this guy, John Blank, who will, his last name won't be mentioned, calls me an hour later and he said, look, uh, I'm going out on the line here. You know, I can't prove that you got hacked. It looks fishy, you wouldn't sell. There's no way you would sell your URL that's your main company, so we've reversed it. It's yours, it's under control, we've locked it down. So the moral of the story is here. If I had had two-factor authentication, there's no way that anybody could have, hacked, could have hacked my account, my computer, my site, whatever. So what I did immediately, and two-factor authentication, you've seen it, it will send a text to your phone, and then you have to type in the code. It's usually a four, six, eight-digit code, and then you have access to it. I put the web account there. I did all of my all of my financial accounts in every bank and financial institution, all two-factor authenticated. Everything, eBay, we're talking PayPal. I two-factor authenticated every single account, and I'm going to change all of my email passwords. You should do that anyway. So what's the moral of the story here? What I learned is that there are always solutions that sometimes the solutions are outside your control. You can do the best you can. I did the best I can to, could to resolve the situation, but that was all I could do. Uh, there was really nothing else in my power. I did everything I could, and then I just let it go. And I accepted my fate. And if that was the way it was meant to be, then, then there's another path for me. When God closes a door, he opens a window. This is just the way it was meant to be. And for better or for worse, I have to deal with it. But it all worked out. And I'll tell you, I was shocked. And I said, you know, I said to John, I said, I, I know you don't know this when you're doing all this stuff because there's a lot of domain name hacking and fraud where they send off, sell off domains, transfer them. All these things happen. Huge brands, it happens. Um, I said, I know you don't know this, you probably don't feel it often, but sometimes you really make a big difference in people's lives just by going a little further extra for them. I said, I wanna send you the best bottle of scotch out there. Just, uh, I'm gonna send it to, no, don't do that. This is my job, this is what I do. Just send out the word that our company really isn't bad, that we do care about our customers and we'll do the best that we can for you whenever we can. So. The other thing is my father was the master complainer with big companies. He'd call up the CEO, you know, figure out a way to get past the secretary and, you know, lay into the guy. And he was very effective. But what I realized is I could be more effective being nice, strong, firm, likable. Don't make yourself dislikable and get results. 
that uh, you know a large a large part of the time that will uh, that will be effective and remedy my problem. So that's what I learned here: this digital near death experience. Whoever, whatever I am, whatever my brand is, I am still me. I am still going to be me. Whatever happens in my life, whatever setbacks, I've learned this many times over and over again. It's just a question of keeping your sanity, keeping calm. Calmness is always preferable to panic. You know, it's like, hey, you're in a, you're in a movie theater, fire breaks out. If you stay calm and you've scoped out the exits in advance, then you can, you can arrive on a course of action that will save you and, and basically you can probably help others because you're calm and they're not. So never panic no matter what. Um, always keep your dignity. Don't get angry at people. I did that at first and I was cursing and screaming and it's ineffective. The people turn you off right away. But if you're calm and you're persuasive and you really come off as a person and come off as somebody who's, who people want to help, they're going to be much more likely to help you. So it just reaffirmed there are people in this world, no matter how negative we might get among others, there are people who don't even know you who are willing to help you just because it's the right thing to do. Most people out there, I believe, will do the right thing when they get the opportunity and there's nothing in it. There was nothing in it for John other than to help somebody. He personally benefited neither way. It didn't matter to him. His future wasn't on the line, but he did it anyway. And I'm telling you, like, that struck a chord so deep in me that, hey, this guy, John, you know, he's the fixer for the company. You know, when everything falls apart, he gets it. And since I had the general counsel's cell phone number and it turned out she was on vacation with her kids, I felt terrible about it. And maybe I would have done something different, but probably not. But I was nice to her. She got me to the right person and it all got resolved. So that's the other thing. Don't take no for an answer, okay? If the first person says no, go to the next, go to the next, go to the CEO, go to the head of the school board, go to the principal's office. Don't take no for an answer if it's something you want and it's something that you have to have or is very important to you. Don't take no for an answer and always get as close to the top as you possibly can close to the top and if that means going into these online websites and hacking people's numbers as long as you do it legally don't do things illegally do nothing illegal that will get you into more trouble than you're in already but don't take no for an answer it's so important the first no is simply your next step to get a yes all right it's just like in sales when somebody says no then you can have a conversation but until you get that first no, you don't really know where they stand, and it's kind of up to you to figure this out. So, so that's it for my uh, digital near-death experience. If you've had a similar one, if you're interested in other details, just email me, kl at kerrylutz.com. Go to our site, financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Sign up for the free newsletter. People out there love it, and we'll be sending them out more often now kind of got that act together. If there's anybody out there who really wants to work on my email, um, on my uh, email newsletter, all right, we can, uh, we can monetize it. I mean, I really don't make any money off of it now. I just use it to keep in touch with you. We got tens of thousands of email address addresses out there. If you're not on there, make sure you sign up right now and just go do it. Let me know if you want to work on it. I made this offer a while ago, but I really didn't find anybody, didn't connect with anybody, preferably somebody who's got writing experience, who, you know, you may be able to turn this into an amazing thing. With an email list as large as we have, uh, it shouldn't be that difficult. Hey, the contest uh, drawing, it's midnight tonight. At 12 o'clock, we're going to find out. I'm going to be looking at... Uh, I don't know, Coinbase probably. They seem to have the most reliable Bitcoin pricing. But don't worry if you miss this contest. We're going to have another um, next month. 
and then we're going to do a webcast with one of our clients and we'll announce the winner on that webcast. Uh, I don't know that I'll be giving out metal again, but I'm thinking the first prize will be $500, second prize $50, etc. And it'll be a great contest. So you want to get notified of the contest when it comes up, just email me, kl at kerrylutz.com. That's all for today. We're going to be reporting back for you from, for, from Freedom Fest, giving you the latest, uh, latest info on free thought in America and the world. It's a really great conference. I'll be interviewing Doug Casey shortly, a couple of others. It's been so much fun. Love doing it. Love all you guys out there. Thank you for your continued support and coming and listening, coming to the site. It means the world to me. It made me realize when I almost lost it all, how important it really is. So thank you all and just stay tuned. You'll be hearing lots more from us coming from Las Vegas. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.